And then there's the airlines. The motion calls on the government to support the hard hit airline sector. We know that there are tens of thousands of jobs that have been lost in that sector. And we are advocating for fully repayable loans, but not without conditions. The conditions we want attached are firstly that the airlines deliver consumer refunds to travelers that couldn't travel because of COVID, that they deliver job guarantees for their workers and restrictions on executive compensation until we're past the COVID crisis. We want them to restore their regional routes that have been closed down over the last few months. And we want them to refrain from clawing back travel agent commissions. Fail. The next area that I want to focus on, Madam Speaker, is the area of travel advisors. There are over 12,000 travel advisors in this country. And on a day after International Women's Day, it should not be lost on all of us that 85% of them are women. And one of the things, and I've met with many of them uh, over the course of the last year, uh, that they're looking for is commission protection uh, from this government uh, when it comes to refunds. Uh, not only are they, are, be, are they being hit on this side of it, but also for many of them who have not been able to earn any income since this pandemic started a year ago, uh, they're also being hit by the credit card companies asking for refunds. Now think about this, Madam Speaker, put yourself in their position. Having not been able to earn income for the better part of a year and now being asked to pay back that income, many of them uh, will not be able to survive this. And so I, I can clearly empathize with travel advisors and the impact that this is going to be have, this is going to have on them. And after this is all over, Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister will be just fine, but it'll be many of these families that I'm speaking about who will be left to pick up the shattered pieces of their lives to try to recover economically. And those families, Madam Speaker, as I conclude, include Travel agents like Charlene Caldwell, Judith Coates, Brenda Slater, Nancy Wilson, Laura Godette, Margie Connor, Nancy Iliotis, Loretta Sellers. The door. My colleague from Skeena Bulkley Valley talked about how the NDP has been calling on the government to um, make sure we get refunds to passengers. We also have to make sure we protect those travel agents that collected commissions. Um, and we want both to happen. We want the refunds to happen. We want to make sure that people get money, not just uh, some promise uh, down the road. But those travel agents are, are disproportionately in terms of overrepresentation by women. And we know women have disproportionately been affected and impacted by COVID, that they're not going to get hit with having to repay these large amounts of commissions, Mr. Speaker. Thank my colleague from Brandon Suris for allowing me <laughs> the opportunity to speak. And, and I do appreciate the, the comments from my friend uh, from Courtney Alberni and, and his comments uh, about uh, the, the speech today. I appreciate that. I, I know in his speech, he talked a lot about small business and he talked about tourism. And in many aspects in that avenue, I'm sure he's well aware of the, the Canadian Association of or the Association of Canadian Independent Travel Advisors. And, and these, these women who have um, basically their, their whole dependence on their career has been depleted by the, the demise of the tourism is industry and, and the big impact that it's had on them. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is that these, these independent business people depend on 100% of their commission fees to, to cover their income. And it's a huge impact upon them and, and they are um, obviously suffering from this great deal. And I'd appreciate hearing some comments. I know uh, the member mentioned a couple of things, but I'd like to hear if he could add a little bit more in this particular area. Well, member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague for that really good question. And as he outlined, uh, the travel agent industry is predominantly women who have, again, been disproportionately impacted uh, by the COVID-19 crisis. And any bailout of the transport sector any and, and, and uh, the air sector has to be contingent uh, on, obviously, refunds to customers and consumers that have uh, bought tickets and haven't been reimbursed, but also to ensure that the commissions that 
what were collected initially by those travel agents isn't going to fall on them because mr speaker it'd be completely unfair they're already feeling the brunt of uh the huge impacts of covid 19 and absolutely the government need, government needs to make sure that it's contingent that we protect those travel agents who who have uh, again been disproportionately impacted to another career questions and comments the honorable member for hamilton mountain Thanks, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my uh, colleague from Courtney Alberni for all the great work he's done on this file. It's just been uh, tremendous. Uh, I want to go back to um, where uh, a previous speaker has mentioned about the Association of the Canadian Independent Travel Advisors, the importance of this that has to be included in the Transportation Recovery Plan. Um, it has to be mentioned that not only do they work on completely on commissions, but they're being told now that if the airlines have to pay back to the consumers, their commissions will be uh, will, will have to be paid back. These, this is work that's been done about a year, year and a half ago. The money's been spent. And if they're not included in the recovery plan, this is going to create huge hardships on the families and uh, possibly thousands of bankrupt, personal bankrupt cases. So uh, does he agree with me? It's imperative that uh, they have to be included. A member for Courtney Alberni. Well, first, I want to thank my honourable colleague for his question. And I also want to thank him for his service. I know he's not running again and for the important work he's done on seniors and pr protecting workers' pensions. Uh, I think all Canadians are grateful and every member in this house is grateful for the work he's done. Um, in terms of those travel agents that have been disproportionately impacted, uh, I can't believe that we would support any agreement, uh, 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 you know, that moves forward without protecting those travel agents. They, they're primarily uh, women in the, that are dominate that sector, and uh, women have been disproportionately impacted, as we've stated earlier throughout this pandemic. We need to make sure that any. Uh, support for the transport sector and especially on consumer refunds which we support also protects those travel agents and ensures that they don't have to pay that money back that would absolutely be critical to be contingent on it from our support i mean debate the honorable member for cloverdale langley city thank you so much mr speaker for more than a year now i've been talking with women across my riding and across the country many of whom are the main breadwinner of the family and have been faced with juggling the responsibilities of childcare during imposed school closures and keeping their small businesses afloat. They've not been able to access income support because their industry doesn't qualify. Particularly impacted are the many independent travel agents across the country who worked tirelessly to assist travelers with re repatriation flights at the beginning of the pandemic and later attempts to get refunds for trips that would no longer be taken. There are over 24,000 travel agents in Canada, over 75% of which are women. Around 90% of travel agents are currently laid off and many earn their income entirely by commission and are faced with commission clawbacks. Now these ladies worked long hours with no pay to ensure that they fulfilled what they considered was their responsibility toward their clients. They received no compensation for the hundreds of hours they spent working to rebook flights and attempting to get refunds for as many of them as possible. They did it because they're passionate about providing quality service from start to finish. And I've heard many on the government side reminiscing today about how we are now at the one year anniversary of the pandemic. This serves to highlight the fact that they were not paying attention when this catastrophe actually started and why Canada has been consistently late from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, it was clear that there was trouble already last year in January, not March, when my local Chinese dance association canceled our New Year's celebration in Langley to protect our community. And yet, following that clear warning cry, our health officials told us not to worry, no need for masks, no need for travel restrictions. Well, the next clear sign that all was not well happened on the Diamond Princess in the end of January, not March. While the Liberals were busy twiddling their thumbs, independent travel advisors were getting frantic calls from the customers who were being quarantined in the ship. These courageous women worked hard to calm fears and get answers from wherever they could. So we only need to look to them to understand how little the government was doing back when they could have made a huge impact on ensuring they were protecting our borders and our airports much earlier. 
Mr. Speaker, my sister is an independent travel agent with cruise ship centers, and we've been struggling together with the impact of COVID since January, not March. She and her colleagues have moved heaven and earth to get their customers home safe, and what do they get in return? Nothing, no support, no recognition, just dead air. Just recently, she was in the office celebrating her 20th year in the travel business. Her colleagues brought balloons and games to try put a brave and cheerful face on what has been a horrendous year of incredible stress and no financial help. As they were about to cut the cake, this government announced that there would be no cruises into Vancouver until March 2022. Everyone burst into tears. This was completely out of the blue and absolutely avoidable had our government not been asleep at the wheel from the st uh, at the moment. I do think it is important to be able to uh, articulate that there's already been $1.8 billion uh, in support, in wage subsidy support that's been provided to the industry. And that's on top of the uh, additional $1 billion that's been uh, given in support to uh, airports and to smaller airlines. But I know that any package that we're looking at, Mr. Speaker, must also keep uh, Canadian customers uh, whole. Uh, I know that many Canadians had their flights cancelled without a refund, and I think that that needs to be addressed. And I do also think that we need to be providing some support to independent travel agents and operators who've also been devastated by COVID. And comments. The Honourable Member for Oshawa. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague from Davenport for her speech. And I acknowledge that uh, she seems to be aware of the challenges with small businesses. However, I've been listening to the Liberal members and there seems to be a um, unrealized um, effect that they don't understand that this is an urgent matter. This is something that in my writing, we have travel agents who worked 24 seven to get people home during the pandemic, but some of them have not had commissions for over a year. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to thank the honourable member for his excellent question. And uh, there's a couple of things I want to respond to in there. Uh, the first is I want to just thank all of those internet, those uh, travel operators. Many of them are independent and the vast majority of them, uh, by the way, are women uh, who worked really hard to bring home uh, uh, Canadians uh, from around the world uh, just after the pandemic lockdown started. So I want to say huge thanks to them. Action. What we're talking about today are specific supports for the workers hardest hit by the pandemic. And in Oshawa, some of the hardest hit people are those in the tourism and hospitality sectors. One of the hardest hit subsectors of the tourism industry have been the businesses of independent, independent travel agents. For example, Tracy Tuberfield, one of my local constituents, hasn't had access to any federal government support programs for her business throughout COVID-19. Between the lack of people traveling and the rigid eligibility requirements for government support, her business has ground to a halt. Tracy has been hard at work for 15 years, Madam Speaker, and she does not want to see some utopian reimagination of the Canadian economy. What she needs and what she wants is an economic recovery that enables her to rebuild her company. Imagine being in Tracy's position, being asked to pay back commissions for trips canceled due to the pandemic, a near halt to all travel, and the government has offered no direct support. How can she rebuild her business? How on earth is she supposed to contribute to our economic recovery? Tracy has even shared that between the pandemic restrictions and, and being left behind by the government, they have caused a huge toll on our mental health, a toll that could be mitigated by direct sector targeted support for independent travel agents. 